Good morning, everybody. Uh, Father Joshua here. Just wanted to share a thought on uh, the readings for Mass today. They're beautiful, um, but also uh, some could be uh, misinterpreted. Uh, first passage is from Hosea, the, the beautiful prophet of Hosea from uh, the 8th century uh, B.C. Uh, he uh, is calling Israel to return to the Lord. He says, let us uh, return to know the Lord, and he will come as certain as the dawn. Uh, the problem, of course, is uh, a little Israel uh, uh, being tempted to form an alliance with uh, mighty Assyria, uh, and, and Hosea uh, wants Israel to rely on God and, and not on uh, 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 political and military promise uh, uh, for salvation. And, and so he prophesies God um, sort of put out with Israel, pleading with Israel, what am I going to do with you, uh, Judah? You, you, you keep wanting to rely on human power, right? Uh, Hosea's uh, plea again and again and again is, is, is rely on God, rely on the God of Israel, uh, not on anything else. Um, uh, this is why I've torn them to pieces by the prophets, why I've slaughtered them with the words of my mouth, God says through Hosea. His judgment will rise like the light, uh, since what I want is love, not sacrifice, right? I said this could be misinterpreted because, especially under uh, uh, present circumstances, uh, because whenever the Bible talks about judgment um, or the wrath of God or something like that, you have a certain sort of uh, person who, who twists those scriptures to apply it to whatever is freaking them out in the present moment, right? So uh, we could read this passage from uh, uh, an 8th century BC prophet and, and somehow think, oh, it's talking about um, uh, the pandemic and, and, and the coronavirus and uh, 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 connecting strange dots to say, this is the end, you know. Um, it's not an intelligent way to read the text. The smarter way to read the text is to uh, see this as an allegory for the, for the, for the, for the spiritual life, uh, to see the call of Hosea, Hosea to, uh, to us to return to the Lord to, uh, as a spiritual invitation, um, especially in times when we can't gather together to worship as Christians normally do, right? Uh, and, and so in that sense, it is a strong prophetic call uh, to you and I uh, to, to return to the Lord. And as I've been saying in basically every, uh, every uh, post uh, so far, uh, to return to the Lord in prayer and, and scripture, um, uh, not to uh, uh, fear and worry and wonder and listen to that guy on Facebook telling you uh, about the four horsemen of the apocalypse or something like that. Uh, and that's... Again, I think something you'll hear in the scriptures over and over and over again, uh, th this call to return, which, which fits beautifully with, uh, with Lent, right? You know, uh, uh, We're trying to return spiritually to the Lord so that we can follow him uh, in Jerusalem to, to, to his death and his resurrection, right? Uh, to be spiritually uh, a a as clean as we can be to see that paschal mystery purely, right? To not see it, you know, in sort of the tired, oh, this must be a rerun, we've seen this before sort of way, which sometimes, to be honest, we experience uh, the great mysteries of our faith that way. We get, we get kind of bored, you know, is this, is this it again? Um, the reason we get bored with, with the mysteries of the faith is, is not because the mysteries of the faith are boring, but because we have uh, uh, bored ourselves by our own sort of spiritual lethargy. And so, uh, again, you know, the, the call is to uh, return to the Lord interiorly, uh, spiritually. Uh, the gospel is, is beautiful. It's that famous gospel from Luke chapter 18 of uh, the proud Pharisee going into the church and, and saying, I thank you, God, that I am not grasping an unjust and adulterous like the rest of mankind. This is, this is the nasty, self-righteous uh, religious person that we, that we all like to despise, right? Um, Jesus uh, didn't, didn't like that sort of religious person either, <laughs> otherwise he wouldn't have told the story. Uh, and, and he sets this proud Pharisee up in contrast 
to, to, the, to the humble man, right? To the man who wouldn't even look up, who, who, who just prayed to God with his head down and, and, and said, uh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner, right? And so the lesson's very simple. Um, uh, look at yourself, uh, be honest. Are you proud, right? Am I proud? Uh, uh, do, do I take pride being a professional Christian, uh, uh, being a priest, you know? Um, uh, that's the temptation for us clergy to be spiritually proud in that clerical sort of way. Uh, uh, but, but lay people have their own temptations. Um, uh, I'm a Catholic, you know, I, I, I belong to the true church. Uh, as wonderful and as true as that may be, you know, it can make us uh, pharisaical. And, and, and proud, and clearly that is a sin, right? Um, we get we get self-righteous from time to time. That's a very human, sinful thing. Everybody does it. Uh, we like to think ourselves better or the center of the universe. And this story is, is quite simply a, a, a spiritual warning against that, right? Um, uh, and, and when you put this passage next to Hosea, the lesson is clear. If, if you want to return to the Lord, as, as, as your soul wants, whether you know that or not, uh, to, to return to the Lord, we have to dismantle our, our, our pharisaical pride. We have to dismantle uh, our arrogance, right? Um, and, and, and not just um, intellectually and theoretically, but daily in, in our behavior, in our, in our, in our, in our uh, response to everything we see and do and every person we come into contact with, even at six feet away. Uh, one of the ways I, I like to tap the brakes on my own pride and uh, call myself out on my own arrogance, you've heard me give this advice before. Um, I always tell people, uh, you know, when I get full of myself and, and self-righteous and, and arrogant, and it happens, you know, maybe six, seven times a day, um, I like to think of angels up above laughing at me. Uh, particularly, I, I like to think of two angels up, up above laughing at me while I'm down here being um, full of myself and arrogant. I imagine an angel up there looking down and starting to giggle, uh, starting to laugh. And then he elbows his buddy and says, get a load of this guy, right? Beca because if you see uh, me being arrogant and full of myself and, and thinking I'm better than other people, if you see it from that heavenly perspective as the angels must see it, uh, then clearly it, it is laughable. Uh, clearly it is pathetic, right? Uh, and, and it just sort of humbles me a little bit. Okay, you know, I'm not as awesome as I think I am, right? And, and, it, and it helps me tap the brakes. And it's a simple little mental exercise, a little spiritual exercise, and I recommend it to you uh, to, to think of angels laughing at you from above uh, because, because it's silly. <laughs> It's silly when you or I uh, get arrogant and full of ourselves. Uh, we're all bozos on the bus just trying to get to heaven. Um, and, and, and we should see ourselves from this heavenly angelic view of, of little children trying to make our way. Right? And I recommend you do that. Uh, think of angels laughing at you. Be because the, the devil wants to give you a different uh, uh, way. Uh, the devil is right there to, to, to accuse you. To, 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 to make you think bad of yourself, right? Uh, because sometimes when we get proud and, and arrogant, we think uh, the only way to fix that is, is to think negatively about ourselves, right? Well, you, I really am a, a sinner. I, 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 we are sinners, but it's how you handle that. Um, you, you really are bad, aren't you? Re you really are a hypocrite. You really are a, a terrible person, right? We start thinking these negative things, and we think we're being humble by doing that, but we're not, actually. We're listening to the liar, right? Uh, congratulations, you're a miserable sinner just like the rest of us, you know? Uh, but, but that does not make you worthless, right? That does not make you bad. That does not make you a, a, a person uh, that is not precious, right? Um, angels will laugh at you and remind you that you're loved by God, right? Uh, chill out, get back in line. The, the, the demons, the devil, uh, will accuse you, right? And, and, and will tempt you towards self-hatred, right? And, and, and make you think it's humility. Uh, be very, very careful, right? And, and, and so, uh, 
Yes, we're, we're called to uh, uh, dismantle our pride. We're called to repent of our pride. We're called to do away with our arrogance. But how do we do it? We embrace humility, which is an embrace of truth, which is an embrace of uh, the, the, the vision, the reality, the, the clarity of sight that you and I are loved children of God, right? That we're equally loved children of God. That I'm loved just as much as that guy and that woman. And, and, and grace is like the sun which shines uh, equally on us all, right? And, and so that's how we, um, that's how we embrace the virtues of, the, of, this, of this poor man who wouldn't even look up to heaven. God have mercy on me, a sinner, right? That was simply the truth. He never told himself he was uh, irredeemable. He never told himself that he was an object worthy of hatred or self-hatred or despair. Not at all. He just said, I'm a sinner. God, please help. And the awesome thing about the gospel is that God helps, right? Uh, God is infinite, right? And so therefore, his, his love uh, uh, surrounds your beginning and it surrounds your end and it pervades everything in between and so there is not a sin there is not there is not a wickedness which you have done which cannot be forgiven which cannot be healed right uh, if you will just embrace this this beautiful humility of God be merciful to me a sinner um, that's how we return to the Lord uh, uh, and it's something to be honest um, I have to do like I said, six or seven times a day, um, and I will be uh, probably for the rest of my life, which is hopefully a long, a long time. Uh, have a beautiful Saturday. Uh, we're live streaming Mass tomorrow at St. Rita at 9 a.m. in English and 10.30 uh, the bilingual Mass. Uh, and, and so do uh, tune in and, and, and pray with us and uh, uh, embrace... Uh, practice of spiritual communion. It, it, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful thing. Uh, have a wonderful day, and God bless. Bye.